I've only walked like three streets since I've arrived here, but yeah, I feel like we might have an early contender for my new favorite city in China. Wait, what? It sounds like I'm missing out. As those of you who watched last week's video know, I sent Jack on a mission to the capital of Cantonese culture, Guangzhou. Unfortunately, I couldn't join him, so I asked you guys to pick an itinerary. So first of all, a couple of people mentioned that you should go to the Beijing Road. This is definitely not my idea of fun. On his first day, things didn't quite go to plan. I appear to have lost the tower. I think I'm going to have to admit defeat. And that's because he spent too much time dancing in the parks. Oh, bloody hell, she's killing me with this itinerary. But he still has 28 hours left to explore this fine city. So with your help, I have given him an action-packed itinerary. He is hoping he can finally try some of the amazing local cuisine. Absolute bad boy. Big slab of glutinous rice. Get in touch with his country's dark colonial history. Probably been some dodgy colonial going on here. Doesn't waste too much time making whimsical statements in parks. This isn't just some sort of dream, this is real life. Takes advantage of the fine southern weather. And of course, makes it up the blooming Canton Tower. I did a bad thing. Hey up missus, I'm really sorry. I hope you're not mad. Anyway, sit back, relax, and let's watch this disaster unfold. So I've got up nice and early, it's about 7 a.m. because I, uh, yeah, I want to beat the heat of the day because it gets hot pretty fast here. Number one on the list is to try Changfe, which I'm very excited to try after yesterday's uh, fiasco when it came to food, to be honest. There's some uh, Lay's American classic. So anyway, let's go see if we can find a little local place. I mean, he's saying all the right things, but will he stay focused on the task at hand? Look at this, it's just an impromptu antiques market on the, uh, on the side of the road. Okay, keep walking, keep walking. And if yesterday's anything to go by, I'm definitely going to meet some friendly faces along the way. Great Britain. Great Britain. All right, we're in business. What an absolute bloody beautiful breakfast. This is changfe. It's like a rice noodle with eggs. I just went for a veggie one because I'm keeping it simple. I'm going to wash it down with a nice bottle of Coke because it just tastes so much better out of a glass bottle, doesn't it? Quick sniff test. I think he forgot we're watching him. Probably shouldn't have worn a white t-shirt for this. Oh my god. That's so fresh. No shit. You just saw them making it. The softness of the rice noodle, but then with the kind of saltiness of the soy sauce. Oh, so tasty. You see, Jack, that is what happens when you listen to the people. It's 8 a.m. here and it's already stiflingly hot now. People are starting to pack up the uh, antiques market, so I think I'd better hurry up to the next location. I think maybe we should um, hop on a little bike because it's uh, some way away. I'm not sure how I feel about all this riding and filming that is going down. Okay, well this is the pin that Nico sent. This is where we are. So maybe we should walk, have a little walk through this little park here. It looks beautiful. Okay, how much time do we reckon Jack can waste in a single park? As predicted, it was pure vibes. You know, parks in China, they just never disappoint. Outside the metro station is these chaps. I was thinking, maybe I'll ask one of them if he can give me a lift to the next location. It's not far, it's only about 50 meters, but it could be fun anyway. I'll probably get way overcharged. Just show me on door show channel. I sure don't show the GRE fan John. Beyond, beyond, beyond. He wanted to charge me 20 quai, and I'm not even joking, it's actually just the other side of this street. Well, you're better off walking then, you lazy bastard. We are crossing a bridge onto an island. Hello. Now when, anyhow. Hello. So when Nico said to me, oh, you're gonna go to an island next. Um, I was kind of assuming something a little bit more tropical, like uh, perhaps say, you know, a Hainan or somewhere like that. Somewhere I could put my feet up, relax. It's not quite that, to say the least. It appears to be kind of a European style old town. Wonder what the story is here, eh? Let's go find out. So whenever I see old statues of Laowais in uh, Asian countries, I start to get a bit worried because it makes me think there's probably been some dodgy colonial going on here. 
Yep, you're not wrong. As you can guess from the slightly out of place architecture, Shamian Island was a British and French concession seized from the Qing Dynasty in 1859. The foreign powers went about building schools, banks, homes and churches, arranged on a series of perversely beautiful tree-lined avenues. So beautiful, but walking around it does make me feel a little bit uncomfortable to be honest. Nico just sent me a document telling me a little bit more about the dark history of this place. And uh, yeah, I'm just glad that these days they're only importing coffee into China and not opium. Indeed. And after the foreign forces were given the boot, there was little use for such opulent dwellings. The houses were converted into government offices and the churches were used as factories. And now, these days, Shamian Island has found a new use as an attraction for both visitors and locals alike. Look at this. Dancing aunties behind me in a European style square. That's a real mix of cultures, eh? man himself and some nice uh, beautiful Chinese characters. So I'll be honest, religion isn't exactly my thing, but I do appreciate that people would show such devotion to build something so beautiful. I guess maybe making videos is uh, my religion and that's what I'm gonna put all of my creative energy into doing, trying to make some beautiful cinematic content for you guys. I just don't know how he comes up with this utter waffle. Anyway, I guess that's you done then, Jack. Oh no, looks like he's found yet more activities to join in with. Okay, now most cities in China have a nickname of sorts. I'm not sure if the same goes for Guangzhou, but if it doesn't have one yet, I'm going to propose we start calling it the City of Vibes. Because everywhere you look, there's just so many people having fun, everyone's so blooming friendly. And it's just got like a real nice atmosphere everywhere you go. Anyway, I don't think Nico's gonna be too impressed by me just standing around absorbing the good vibes. So we'd better hurry up and go to the next location. Ah, the classic vlogger walking away from the camera shot. Come on, we all know he's gonna have to run back to grab the camera. Okay, so just over the river from Xiamian Island is a whole market area. I've come to this one first, which is the Qingping traditional Chinese medicine market. Oh my God, it just smells so aromatic. You guys all know that smell, distinctive smell of the Chinese herbs. I'd really love to learn more about Chinese medicine because this all looks so interesting, but uh, to be honest, I don't really know a lot about it. So if you guys have any recommendations on how I could learn more about this topic, do let me know. Maybe we can even make a video about it in the future. Yep, that's a great idea, Jack. But for now, you'll have to wander around and guess the uses of the many curious items on sale. Well, I think I've stumbled across the mushroom section and right behind me is what I think could well be the biggest mushroom I've ever seen in my life. It's like five of my heads. Anyway, our helpful audience suggested that you keep walking north out of the market, Jack. So the next spot that Nico has sent me to isn't so much a specific location or even a specific street. It's rather a whole area. This is the Li Wan district, which is a uh, pretty noisy, a pretty bustling old hub, I guess, for all kinds of trade. So we've still got some Chinese medicine. We have some kind of root drying out in the strong midday sun. Oh, it smells really strong. But there's all sorts of other things going on here as well. Let's go check it out. So this super tall building behind me actually reminds me of the uh, tall and skinny buildings that you'd find in Vietnam, in Hanoi or somewhere. Oh my God, the absolute diversity of architecture you can find in just one alley is incredible. Up here, we've got this beautifully old ancient little building right next door to a, uh, these really cool tiled little building. Actually, Seeing as Jack just mentioned the architecture, we should give a shout out to Guangzhou's Qilo. This is a kind of Chinese-European fusion style of architecture, comprised of two or three-story arcade houses with elaborate facades that keep the narrow alleys down below nice and shaded. The upper levels are reserved for the living quarters, and the street level is a place of bustling commerce. Each box merchants have their own speciality, be that medicine, or exotic animals. 
Okay, so I've just turned onto this street, which seems to specialize in two very random and slightly different things. The first being pet shop supplies, and the second being little models and uh, like clay figurines. In fact, ooh, I like the look of that one. This is actually a pagoda, I think, in Guangzhou. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. So maybe we purchased us that for Nico, uh, so she can feel included. You always see ma. Well, I was gonna buy it, but unfortunately, uh, she doesn't have WeChat. This is how you know you're in an old school part of China when you can't pay for things using WeChat. Okay, this street is clearly the uh, tropical fish and dog food street. And just in front of me, I think I spot some neon signs. Looks like some tasty food. So maybe we should try go get some lunch, eh? Okay, I mean, it looks good, but unfortunately no roast goose, which is what Nico has instructed me to find for my lunch. So the search continues, eh? Aha, now this is what we want. Some nice crispy roast duck, but you can see there's a bit of a queue, unfortunately. So maybe we'll keep walking and see if we can find one that's a bit quieter, or at least let lunch time subside, eh? Okay, well on second thoughts, it started absolutely hammering it down with rain. So uh, I'm just going to take my opportunity and get a little bit of duck now. Sorry, goose. Goose, not duck. Ah, yeah, that's my guy. Not going to lie though, bit jealous. My mum always makes roast goose for our Christmas meal. Mmm, mmm. Then we've got duck and vegetables. They also gave us a free drink. Anyone know what that is? All of this, the goose, the vegetables, this tasty ass sauce, rice, and the drink. Maybe I already said the drink. Only cost 16 yuan. Absolute bargain, mate. Um, oh, like a sticky sauce. That kind of reminds me of Chinese food in the UK, like a Cantonese from a Cantonese takeaway. Nico would flip in, love this. Oh dear, you struggling down there, Lao Wai? The sauce is basically dribbling all down my leg. Oh my God, and look at that absolute bad boy. Oh yeah. Oh, stop it, I can't take it. Oh my God, that's so good. I think the veg has been cooked in goose fat as well. Whole big chili peppers. Oh, Nico is missing out big time. I feel so bad about this. No, you don't. Absolutely sublime. I'm normally vegetarian, to be honest. I'm only eating this for Nico, okay? Yeah, sure. Don't even pretend you're not enjoying it. Definite thumbs up from me, Clive. My God, that was flipping incredible. You get all of that for 16 RMB. You wouldn't even get a bowl of noodles for that in Beijing. We are now on the uh, fruit and vegetable, but also hairdressing street. Interesting. Ooh, maybe he saw how sweaty you were, Jack. If I did move to Guangzhou, I think this is where I would choose to live because you know what? I flipping hate shopping at stuffy supermarkets. I'd much rather shop locally at places like this, finding the freshest ingredients and much more interesting and tasty choices. Oh, oh my God, it's absolutely raining cats and dogs out there. I think I'm gonna be spending the bloody whole afternoon in this wet market. Well, this has thrown a big old spanner in the works, but maybe that's a good thing as we still have so many items left on the itinerary and this video is already way too long. So join us next week once Jack has had the chance to dry off and I sent him the final part of his action-packed itinerary designed by you guys. Operation C, the Canton Tower. Make sure you like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe so you don't miss it. Bye.